So something we'll find out pretty quick is that you're very limited when using Ajax without using PHP or some other type of um, language that you might be connecting into. Um, because the power is really going to be integrating and sending data to your PHP to a database as well, and then receiving data or information from a database. Okay, But there's still some, some things we can do to have fun. Uh, without having connection to PHP, because PHP is a bit beyond the scope of what we have set up for this class. So here's an example without using PHP of just loading in a page that has an image and then it also has a loading um, image displaying. So I come here to my example and um, just a button. So when I click the button, it's gonna trigger the function that will load in the HTML page. This is placeholder text, obviously, and that will be replaced by the um, HTML document. And the HTML document has a very large image on it. It's an image of a TV, and I just made it very large intentionally because I wanted it to take a little bit to load. Now, truth be told, it actually still doesn't take that long to load. It's less than one megabyte image. So I actually use a set timeout to make it so the, the, um, the loader image stays on for um, a couple seconds. So here's the result. I click, I press on click me, the loader image is showing. And then after three seconds, it shows that image. And here's the image of the TV. All right. So it's a very large image. I think it's like 900 by a thousand, something along that line. It's much larger than you'd ever reasonably use, but I just have it in there to have something large so we can see, uh, this in process. So actually I go ahead and refresh this. And when I refresh it, it returns back to its uh, first normal state. Okay, so I will um, come back to that code here. This is the code for loading the TV. Um, let me see if I have the test three. Okay, so for test three, extremely simple. Uh, just having the image source TV and then the alt uh, TV image. And I intentionally didn't put width and height in there just to make it take like that one millisecond more of a time within the browser. But but I still it still loads pretty quick on my on uh, on my browser. Uh, cause I have a fast connection. So I wanted to make sure that for everyone, they still have a little bit of a pause. Okay. So digging into the code here, um, there's a div ID that I got from an online, um, resource here, which I actually have a link to that will be helpful for you. And so they actually use the same, um, ID here. The ID is not really that important, but you'll just recognize it if you go and use that online resource. So I wanted to point it out, uh, because that ID could be anything. Um, so we have that name and placeholder text. You could just leave it blank if you want. Uh, here in this, we have the on click and it's actually um, calling that function. This is a bit complex of a name, but you know, it could be anything you want. I just want you to know that it's not a built-in uh, um, uh, jQuery method. All right, so that could be any name. And then of course, just um, the value here. Okay, so once you click on it, it comes on up here and it's gonna run that function. And here's the function that it executes. Now worth noting is that up here, uh, when the document loads, we're actually going to um, make sure that the cache, the, the cache loading is false. All right. So this is a good thing to have in place when you're um, dynamically working with um, content from the server when you're loading in external files, because you don't want to have difficulty having to refresh your page and checking and make sure things are working and, um, and it, it may cause bugs as well. So you can just use, there's, there's a jQuery um, property that you can just use to make that false. Okay, so this is the function that, um, that works when you click the button. And what it does is it just loads into that um, first ID called uh, example placeholder. It just loads the HTML right here. And what that HTML is, is just loading in an image and it's loading in a loader image that is in the same folder. And that image could actually be in a different folder. It could be in a subfolder like images slash loader. Okay. Um, and then I got this uh, just offline. You can actually create these online. Uh, there's various websites for creating these animated GIFs. And so just in case you didn't realize it, uh, you can have an animated GIF. Animated GIF is it, it's a, a GIF image that just holds multiple states or multiple uh, images within that one. And so that's how it creates the animation. And all browsers will display that um, GIF as being animated. 
Okay, so it'll just keep playing that. And then what you can do, the next part here is right here where it just loads and it loads the page. Okay, so which I'm highlighting, that's the important part. That doesn't have to be in a set timeout. I'll explain that in just a second. So it loads that and while it's loading that in, it will show the animation up above um, the loader.gif. Okay, and so on my browser, it took less than a second to actually download that image, even though it was like 900 uh, megabytes. So it may have been actually because it was in the cache. So what I do here then is I actually have a set timeout. This is just a very basic set timeout. Uh, it doesn't need to be cleared because it's only occurring once. It's being triggered after three seconds. So this is what's been occurring. I mean, this is what's going to be uh, occur. And this is the timeline. So actually, three seconds may not be long enough because if a person is on a, um, a slow connection, then they may need to actually take more time. So you may want to set that to be nine seconds or 10, what have you. Um, there's better ways to do that, really. Um, uh, uh, but this is a this is a workaround that work right now as a temporary basis. So we'll give um, the illusion that things are loading while that image is uh, while that large TV image is being downloaded off the server.